It takes a long time to build a big beautiful city in city skylines, but what if it didn't? I decided to challenge myself to see if I could hit 50k population in less than 10 hours. That equals roughly 10 city skylines years with no pausing or speeding up. For this challenge I did exactly that. Only building in regular play mode. No money cheats or building outside the realm of possibilities. We are going to build a city the good old fashioned way with hard work and labour. This wasn't a speed run to 50k, I wanted to take my time, smell the roses, look at the scenery, buy a coffee. I wanted this to be a big beautiful city, not just some flat gridded monstrosity. The terrain was going to be pretty challenging, and not being able to pause or speed up the simulation was going to cause some serious headaches. But a good challenge is a great way to get creative, so without further ado, let's get started. The map we're using for this challenge is a map I've grabbed from the Steam Workshop. It is a mighty fine looking map and if you're interested in using it, there is a link to it in the description below. I've made some small changes such as replacing the roads and also replacing the trees with these new pine trees that Mr. Mason has created, but besides that, the map is as it is, giving me some real Jurassic Park vibes, but we're not here to play God, we're here to build a city, so let's find the sun square and get started. With a simple connection to the elevated highway, I continue the grid layout, imagining where the elevated highway has disconnected some of the road layout, and then also taking into consideration the contours of the landscape. With some residential and commercial zoning, I placed down some city services, the stock standard wind farm up in the mountains with a non-essential road just for a little bit of extra realism. While away for the first inhabitants, I placed down our industrial zone, far enough away from the city so that it doesn't pollute our residents, but close enough so that the commute isn't too brutal. It's also connected directly to a highway, and there's also a rail line down here, which we'll use a bit later on. With people beginning to move in and our city now connected up to city services, I've realised that our little town is still unnamed. In the spirit of how cities usually get their names, I decided to name the city after the founding fathers of this brand new land. Sh Shirley. And just like that, the little town of Shirley was born, named after the brave explorer travelling far and wide in a red hatchback. I decided to preserve this moment by making Shirley's house historical, we'd hopefully save it on our journey to becoming a giant city. And look, it wasn't much at first, but it was a start. And every great city has a starting point, a humble beginning, and this is Shirley's. Nothing fancy, nothing over the top, just quaint, simple, relaxed. For now. We were 8 minutes into our challenge, but still not making any money. I tinkered with the budget, cutting corners and squeezing the tax out of my residence, but it was clear that we needed some sort of specialised industry and lots of it. I nabbed the largest loan possible and I checked out our map to see what sort of industry we'd specialise in. With an abundance of forest, it was clear that the little town of Shirley was going to begin its journey as a logging community. Admittedly, it did feel a little wrong chipping away at the beautiful forests of the island, though later down the track, it wouldn't be us, the citizens of Shirley, that had later decimate these very forests. For now, we were turning these wood chips into hard earned cash. Yes, it was merely pocket change, but it was enough to slowly expand the roads of Shirley. With every road came more houses, and with more houses came more taxpayers. And after a bit of this and a bit of that, sure enough, we were still making pocket change. I mean, the first day of this challenge was really quite slow. Every time I wanted to expand, I had to wait for a little bit of extra money, and then after we expanded, we'd have to wait because we didn't have enough money. I decided to check back in with Shirley and see how she was going, and I was surprised to see that even she was doing her part working a job at a local shop. It's amazing to think that one minute you're founding a town, and the next minute you're mowing lawns for a living. It just goes to show that the citizens of Shirley were in it for the long haul, with everyone doing their part to make this town the best place possible. Hospitals were built, trees were planted, parks were landscaped, roads were upgraded. The little starter town of Shirley was slowly blossoming into a small city with citizens even celebrating the opening of its very first university. But nobody was smart enough to attend. Defund the university, you idiots, and build a library instead. Yes, we're missing a couple of steps and mistakes were made along the way, but after an hour and 40 minutes of gameplay, we were finally the proud owner of not one, but two tiles. At this point in the challenge, we've only got about 8 hours left of gameplay, and only about 10% of the way to our 50k mark, I knew that I was going to have to get a little bit of a move on. We needed to make some money and we needed to make it fast, so I decided to head to the hills and get into some mining. This was going to be a big polluter, so I've gone as far away from the city as possible. With bugger all space and money, I'm only able to place down a couple of ore mines, but even this is enough to get into the double digits. So while I wait for the big bucks to roll in, I decide to head back into the city and expand. I begin to do the same for our industrial zone, and it was at this point that I realised that our forestry industry, the backbone of our industrial zone, 
was engulfed by a massive bushfire. As someone who never plays with natural disasters enabled, I absolutely panicked at the sight of this bushfire. The city being wiped out by a fire was something I honestly hadn't planned for. In order to save the city, I placed down a fire helicopter depot, and then I sit back and relax and watch the little heroes save the city from certain destruction. Wow, money well spent. While the forest continues to burn, I get back to work. The city ain't gonna build itself. Still constantly running out of money, I knew that a strong industrial backbone was gonna help me make a good chunk of money for future development. The ore mine was the key, but I just didn't have enough money to do any good expansion over there. So I figured this would be a good opportunity to do some less expensive work towards the city. The key to this challenge was not just to make a big city quickly, but also make it look halfway decent. A big city park on the shoreline was my first focus, adding a central land value to all the residents that live in this area, and then also giving a reason for tourists to come to this place. A key around the shoreline and then some simple pathways was just about all I wanted to do for this park. With increasing population, we also needed to do some expansion to some of the roads, starting with a historical bridge across the river, and then one of the roads within the city, making sure that Shirley's house didn't get destroyed in the meantime. I also continued the parkland around the river, increasing land value for the rest of the city, and hopefully attracting new residents. And by attracting new residents, of course, we're going to need some extra land. Yes, I wasn't exactly rolling in the dough, but I had enough money to drag out the roads with Zoni being free and general city services being relatively inexpensive. Our financial situation was becoming less and less of a concern. We were now focusing on attracting the numbers and I figured a giant national park between the two cities would be a great way to increase a bit of the land value. This new city was going to be quite different to Shirley, with wide avenues on the coastline and a commercial district on the beach side, it was going to be more of your classic beach side tourist destination. But for now it's just a bunch of windy avenues waiting for residents to start to move in. So I decided to leave this new city and head back to Shirley and see how it was going. Unfortunately things were not good for Shirley, the person and the city. As a fire engulfed the farmland and the surrounding bushland, the city founder, Shirley, was encountering some health problems. She was dead, which was a problem. She lived a full life, living to the age of 93, mowing lawns and retiring in the very home that she grew up in. Uh, honestly, I kind of forgot to check back in with Shirley, but I'm sure she lived a great life. So how do we honor Shirley, the founder of this great, wonderful city? By building an interchange. She would have loved that. A big, beautiful interchange, heading to the heart and center of Shirley. I mean, to the city of Shirley. And expanding to the coastline, everything that Shirley would have ever wanted. And with that, I decided to upgrade the rest of the highway connections leading into the city, which needed a little bit of an upgrade. In particular, heading into our industrial zone, which also needed an upgrade. And with that, four hours in and our citizens better connected, our little island was looking a whole lot more complete. But with only 16,000 residents, we weren't exactly meeting all the targets and I'd already zoned out all the available spaces. At this point, it wasn't a space issue, but more of a moving in issue. Before I did any extra expanding, I needed to attract more people into the city. So I decided to give the people of Shirley their first taste of some public transport. Yes, it was only a bus network and it was pretty basic in most parts, but it was a start and it did make the citizens pretty happy. It was also improving some of the traffic flow on some of our roads, which was getting pretty bad. But it's going to take more than just a bus network, so I decided to give the downtown a bit of a makeover. I wanted this to be a big bustling city, with high density skyscrapers in the middle, plenty of places to shop plazas, malls, and places for tourists to come and visit. I started with the big unique buildings first, and then placed down the buildings that I thought were going to make a nice skyline. If I saw a building grow that I liked, I'd make it historical, and then I'd demolish any buildings that I didn't want. I turned the district into an IT cluster to encourage some of the high density, high tech office buildings to grow. And after a while, our downtown was starting to look a little bit more respectable, but it wasn't done there. With all these extra people coming into our city, I needed to improve the outside connection. There's no better way to do that than a big central station, heart and centre of our city. I connected this up to the train line heading towards the outside connection. With multiple platforms, I wanted to make sure that there's plenty of connections so that trains could flow nice and easy between them. There's a couple of platforms of a line left unfinished, we're going to get to that part another time. And there's also an elevated metro line, which we'll also get to some other time. But for now, I finished off the train line by creating a park surrounding it, and then I wanted to move on to the other side of the river. I 
was going to do a reimagining of Shirley University. This was going to be a dedication to the founder of Shirley. We couldn't just give her an interchange. Yes, there was an interchange over here. This one wasn't dedicated to her. This was just something we definitely needed. But the university, this is Shirley University. A big, beautiful, custom university. Sporting all the bells and whistles, no expenses spared. I wanted this to be really nice. Lots of parkland surrounding it. Every single building you could possibly ever want. And in the heart and center of Shirley, what else could you want? The university was completing Shirley. It was the complete picture. Although it wasn't because we got back to expanding. Oh yes sorry, we did, we got expanding into the ocean. Nothing was safe, not even the ocean. We were once again running out of space. I needed it for high density. This time it was high density eco living, right next to the university, flash, posh, beautiful. These guys needed an island. Jellybean Island was born. How do you get to the island? With ferries. Citizens celebrate the second addition to the public transport network. The city was becoming busy. It was dense. I needed a break. I had to get out. We needed to spend a little bit of time reconnecting with nature. So I headed up to the mountains to build myself a little bit of a nature park. I started off with a dam, providing the city with a bit of extra power and also a lovely little backdrop. There's some brilliant windy roads up here, heading towards some different areas of the city and different parts of the map as well. We'll see tourists start to travel up these parts when we start building up a little bit more of this nature park. For now, we've got this nature reserve that goes to the center of this cave. I like to imagine that there's a whole cave network through here, including some cave tours and some abseiling. After mid, I spent a pretty long time up here, knowing that the city below me was slowly expanding. I just spent a little bit of time chilling and detailing. By the time I was ready to leave, it was now six and a half hours since I began this challenge. And with only 25,000 citizens living on the map, I knew that I needed to get back to work. We had high demand for industrial zones, so I figured the best spot would be right next to this highway interchange. We were lacking any sort of unique factories, so I figured that this would be the perfect place for them. These are big money makers, which is exactly what we need for the next part of our expansion. We're now working on the other side of the island. There's a real lack of space out this way, but it's pretty much the only space we've got left. I start by creating this little town over this way, just below this interchange, and then continue these roads a little bit further out towards what is going to be a much larger town. We probably run out of money again. All this terraforming is going to get really expensive. So I'm left just to zone what we've already got and hopefully make a little bit of money before we have to do the next part. This larger town is using what is left of the largest space available that we've got. I like to imagine that this town is in fact all the other towns that surround this area. And this is just the heart and center, the town center. And there's gonna be quite a lot of people living out this way. So we'll start with a main road, with some smaller roads branching off it. The key is not to make too many intersections because that'll cause traffic. So I'm only choosing the main roads to actually intersect with this main one. For zoning, I'm keeping all the high density on the main roads. We have a strip of commercial up on the top, and then a little bit more down towards the beach. I wanted this again to be a little bit of a tourist town, but then I also think that it needs some sort of industrial specialization. With all this ocean surrounding our island, I think it's about time that we have at least one town specializing in fishing. So that's what this town becomes, a fishing town with a cute little beachside commercial district on the other side. I continue to work on the surrounding towns, finding where the smaller center of town is, and then expanding out the commercial districts, pretty much trying to find any available space. We are running out of space, and we are also running out of time. With the addition of these extra towns, Shirley streets are becoming majorly congested. So I get back to the city and work on some of these streets, adding in intersections and better connections to the highway, and finding the places that are worst affected. Unfortunately, it's all around the industrial zones, which are the areas that I needed the most. For the most part, people seem to be pretty happy, with people still seem to be moving in. However, for an increasing demand in industry and offices, we're about to have a massive unemployment problem. So not only do I have to find industrial space for the demand that we already have, but the demand for the future. Now we are absolutely lacking in the space, and we also don't even really have that much money. So we go to one of our last remaining areas, this area was always planned to be an industrial zone. We have offshore oil available, which turned this industrial zone into an oil facility. This is excellent news for our bank balance because oil is one of the best ways to make money in the game. 
Industry, however, is also a great way to make traffic and we start to see a huge amount of traffic starting to bank up in this area. With the addition of a small town, another beachside town. We need to find a new route for our traffic to get to and from our oil industry. There's only one way into the oil industry and that's bypassing this small town. So I demolish this tunnel instead of going through the town and create an extra route that goes across this bay and that way now we have two entrances. I push on with the expansion, adding in extra roads for zoning depending on what sort of demand we have. At this point we have plenty of places for people to move in. That's not our problem. Our problem is that people aren't moving in. Without being able to speed up the gameplay, people move in really slowly. No matter how attractive I make this place, people seem to be moving in at about the same rate the whole time. But regardless, I keep building. I keep building to make Shirley the best place possible. That's what Shirley would have wanted. That's what we've always believed in. Shirleyans are all about- Shirleyans? Shirleyans are all about expansion. They're never going to stay a small town. They're not small town people. They're big city people. And you know what? This is a big city. A big city with 53,000 residents. Yep, that's right, I hit it. And honestly, just under 10 hours. So why did I do this? Well, honestly, a couple of reasons. First of all, I wanted to see if I could do it. 50,000 residents in 10 hours was actually quite a lot of fun. And I'd like to be doing more challenges like this. If you've got any suggestions for things that I could be doing like this, please let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, what should we be naming these places? We've only got Shirley so far. I'd love some names for some other towns. But I also wanted to challenge myself to edit a video like this, so hopefully you found this somewhat entertaining and a little bit different to what I usually do. Don't expect this for every video, just sometimes. But now that we've got Shirley, I'd like to use this city just for a couple of videos every now and again, see what we can do. Big shout outs to my patrons for supporting the channel and making videos like this possible. Mehmet Ali Bariskin, Samuel S, KC27, Samuel Liu, Michael, Richard Blakely, Mike BR, Tivida Pinta, Nick Garn, Oliver Assis, and Christopher C. Penny. Thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.